in a time we're waiting in the queues like a proverbial sin, and instant gratification is at an all-time peak. This is pretty much like feeding into that completely. Good afternoon morning and welcome to Turbo Tortoise Tech. I finally got an excuse to use the test bench and in the exact way that I hope to use it because the whole point of having open air is to avoid temperature and other problems, you know, from it being in a case and the, the case affecting the fans, airflow to the components, etc. This is a static environment with no real airflow beside the fans that you can see over there spinning away very viciously. Um, and uh, yeah, then there's some static cooling for our NVMEs, which is part of the reason why we have this motherboard. The other reason is I can run it like this with the onboard graphics because on the torpedo, you have an HDMI and a display and the 12600K does have HD770 graphics. So then I can eliminate the big chunky heat of the graphics card from the environment and get much, much better testing out of it for NVMEs because one would sit there and then you'll have two and three over there which is a nice thing with the platform as well is this is gen 5 now pci express so it's even more bandwidth and more stuff and the more faster so for testing a gen 4 nvme there's going to be absolutely no bottlenecks which is what i assumed when i connected it into one of the um, gen 4 ports but this port specifically does get like performance enhancement so i have tested both of the ssds in this case this is also with the 5200 megahertz xpg we've got the xpg high performance ddr5 will paired with this so it's really like the best of the best that you can sort of well, have right now literally is the latest and the greatest so this is going to be our testing methodology and our platform for testing nvmes so what do we have on deck today well it's clev c920 it's got very promising data transfer rate it promises up to 7000 on the read and 5500 on the write, which is very good for gen 4 and for the price point and stuff the clevs are very aggressively priced they do come with five-year local warranty as well which is the sort of standard these days for SSDs. So it's good that they've come up to standard. The 2TB as well does quote 6850 right, which uh, is quite a lot, but you'll see with the controller and with small file types, that's not always the case. So Crystal Disk Mark 6.0.2 is really my baseline for testing. I really do like that bit of software. And then I've done one gig and 32 gig tests in order to test the temperature. So the base test for this do report exactly that the maximum speed looks pretty good but when you look at the smaller file handling especially when compared to the half speeded gen 3 e2000 you notice that those gaps are not really that wide and in some areas it looks like the e2000 might actually be a better option but moving on to the 32 gig test and that data you can see that the sustained data rate on the clev is actually pretty consistent so it shouldn't drop off as time goes by but the temperatures really are quite high actually even even in with it being considered that this is a bigger piece of aluminium over here for then one nvme it's only twice as it is twice the size right so there is twice the cooling performance it doesn't really work like that but there is more surface area so there is going to be a better cooling result so do take that with a pinch of salt but i wasn't expecting it to be that much better the the Hikvision only hit 45 degrees C. The Clev hit 60 with that beefy heatsink on it. And with, like I say, no other cooling and stuff, the, the, even the CPU cooling right, is pushed out over there. It's not, there's no heat or anything to sit over these components. It's in a static open environment and there is a little bit of airflow through here. So there's no you know, interference as it were from the case or anything like that. And it hits 60 degrees during that test and that's 32 gig is quite a big data transfer size you're not going to do anything near that when you're playing games etc if you're looking at using the drive for that you, you're never going to do that kind of amount of sustained data rate over that many tests and stuff it's, it's just unrealistic that you uh, if you consider per test is a 32 gig it did a 256 gigabit gigabyte gigabyte not bit very important gigabyte test on there 256 gigabyte gigabyte you're not gonna unless you're transferring a game from one thing to the other or you're using a lot of media and if you want to use this for 4k etc that's actually where this thing really shines the small trial you know, 
The small file transfer was not nearly as good as I was hoping it would be, especially for Gen 4s. I've seen in some of the other drives that I've tested, like the MP600 XT is like way ahead of its Gen 3 compatriots, but in this instance, it was a lot closer. That is not the end of the world, really, especially because, like I say, you only really get that maximum transfer speed when you are dealing with the larger file sizes, when or open queues in one big file, then sure. But if you've got fewer queues, if like if it's a game that can only use two cores of the processor, for instance, like some older legacy stuff, then that is going to affect your loading times. Um, stuff like CS and Dota spring to mind for like current games that people are still playing. They'd work on that basis. They're not actually very good with multi threading So that is going to affect like the, the difference between a Gen 3 and a Gen 4 on that loading time is not going to be that evident, but it has to be a top end Gen 3. That's the main thing. The Hikvision E3000 is a high performance Gen 3 drive. It's also made by guys who make storage for you know, DVR systems, they're used to having to have good data transfer rates because that's their core business. So it makes sense that their storage would sort of behave like that. If you're looking for best speed though, and you absolutely hate waiting, and you're editing like 4K video or something, then the Gen 4 makes a lot of sense. Honestly, to have this as an editing drive is kind of like a, a touch salivating because on a more involved review, like for a laptop or something, I'll use like 20 gigs worth of 4K footage. And that would be really nice for that to be snappy in and out of my Premiere. And I, re I do already have it set up like that on a baby Gen 3, um, the E1000 Hikvision, which is like quite like slow compared to these two. It's like a 2000 meg max out drive. This is, this is, this is, yeah, significantly faster than that, as you can see with the, those big file sizes. It's really, really good at that. Clev, unfortunately though, just seems to peter off a little bit where temperatures controlled or, or concerned. You, you literally have to have a, a heatsink on it because once it hits 80 degrees, it's going to thermal throttle into the basement. And without that heatsink, I would, the hazard, look, it hit 60 degrees, which was the max temperature within about two minutes of a 10, 15 minute test. So you're gonna be really good for like two, three minutes and then it's just gonna tank and it's gonna feel horrible and stuttery and just like a bad time. So if you are looking at getting, if you are looking at getting one of these, words in English, if you are looking at getting one of these, I really would suggest you do so with a heatsink. It is still very good. The, the quality of the drive and the, the performance and the warranty, everything does kind of match up. I just think their controller is a little bit behind, but it's not the end of the world. The price of his performance here is still pretty solid. Anywho, that's all I have for you on the first test bench test with the Gen 5 PCI Express even. I also noticed that with the E2000 in that slot, it actually also ran faster. So perhaps those buses aren't just limited to the generations that, you know, they are so-called improving. It seems like there's a little bit of step back on that, which is kind of cool and sick to see. Anyway, hope you guys stay safe, keep well, and I will see you on the flip side. That was planned.